Welcome friends! I'm Dr. Rajshrina Budripad and today's video is all about high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. Did you know that hypertension affects over half the adults in the United States? And it affects over a billion people worldwide. It's thought to be a silent killer because so many people have no symptoms even when their blood pressure is chronically elevated. With hypertension, you can go for years without having any symptoms and then suddenly one day have a heart attack or a stroke. It can also lead to chronic kidney disease or dementia. Unfortunately, hypertension is on the rise, and this has to do with our modern lifestyles which put us under a lot of chronic stress. Whether it's work deadlines, the news, relationships, or taxes, stress is everywhere. In addition, a lot of people suffer from emotions like anger, frustration, irritation, and restlessness which can all contribute to high blood pressure. Your blood pressure has two numbers. The top number is your systolic blood pressure and the bottom number is your diastolic blood pressure. So what does that mean? When your heart is pumping, this generates the systolic blood pressure which is the top number. When your heart relaxes and is filling, this generates the diastolic blood pressure, which is the bottom number. So what's the official definition of hypertension? Previously, any blood pressure over 140 over 90 was considered high. In 2017, the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association changed the official definition of hypertension. Now, any blood pressure over 130 over 80 is considered high. Normal or optimal blood pressure is considered below 120 over 80. If your blood pressure is over 120 over 80, it's considered elevated. If it's over 130 over 80, then it's considered hypertension stage 1. If your blood pressure is over 140 over 90, then it's considered hypertension stage 2. Finally, if your blood pressure ever rises to above 180 over 120, this is considered a hypertensive crisis and it's an emergency because it puts you at high risk of complications like a heart attack or stroke, so you want to seek a doctor's attention immediately. Have you ever wondered what's causing your blood pressure to be elevated? Let's review some of the common root causes of hypertension. First, we have stress. Chronic stress raises your cortisol levels, which is a hormone produced by your adrenal glands, and this can raise your blood pressure. Inflammation anywhere in your body, including your gut microbiome, can cause hypertension. If you're eating a standard American diet, also known as the SAD diet, which is high in sodium and processed foods, this can cause hypertension. If you're overweight or suffering from insulin resistance or diabetes, this could contribute to hypertension. Sleep apnea can be another root cause of hypertension. So if you snore loudly at night and wake up tired every morning, it's a good idea to get a sleep study done. Nutrient deficiencies, like a deficiency of magnesium or essential omega-3 fatty acids, could also contribute to hypertension. Finally, excess alcohol or caffeine could also be a cause of hypertension. Did you know that your gut microbiome, which is that ecosystem of trillions of bacteria in your gut, can actually affect your blood pressure? Research shows that people with hypertension often have a less diverse gut microbiome. Having dysbiosis, which is a bacterial imbalance or an overgrowth of a bad bacteria or yeast, has also been associated with hypertension. The bacteria in your gut digest whatever you eat and create postbiotics, also known as short-chain fatty acids. Having low postbiotics has also been associated with hypertension. Finally, if your gut is inflamed due to a poor diet, this can affect the permeability of your gut, which we call leaky gut, and this can cause systemic inflammation, which can also contribute to hypertension. If you'd like to learn more about leaky gut, please check out my video, which I'll link in the description below. Inflammation anywhere in your body is another big root cause of hypertension. And we can measure your inflammation levels by checking your high sensitivity C-reactive protein as well as your homocysteine level on your blood work. If you're overweight and have insulin resistance, this could be a cause of inflammation. 
Research even shows that having periodontal disease, which is inflammation in your teeth and gums, can also be associated with hypertension. Did you know that periodontal disease often reflects a disrupted oral and gut microbiome? As always, inflammation in your gut is another big root cause of systemic inflammation. Finally, if you have pain anywhere in your body, this indicates inflammation and it can also raise your blood pressure. For example, many people suffer from joint pain, which indicates joint inflammation. Did you know that our blood pressure is regulated by a complex series of hormones released by multiple organs throughout our body? This is called the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. It's fascinating to see how all these organs work together to control our blood pressure. It starts out with our kidneys making a hormone called renin and our liver making a hormone called angiotensinogen. Renin helps convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Then our lungs produce a hormone called ACE, which stands for angiotensin converting enzyme, which converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 can constrict blood vessels to raise blood pressure, but that's not all. It also tells your adrenal glands, which are the tiny glands that sit on top of your kidneys, to make a hormone called aldosterone. Aldosterone tells your kidneys to reabsorb more sodium and water, which raises your blood pressure. As you can see, the human body is quite complex when it comes to controlling your blood pressure. A lot of prescription medications that lower blood pressure work by blocking steps in this pathway. For example, there's ACE inhibitors as well as ARBs, which stands for angiotensin II receptor antagonists. Now why does chronic stress raise your blood pressure? That's because when you're under chronic stress, your adrenal glands make another hormone called cortisol. Unfortunately, cortisol can cause weight gain, insomnia, and a rise in your blood pressure. We can measure your cortisol levels at various times throughout the day with an adrenal saliva test. In this report, if your results fall within the green area, that's considered normal. So your cortisol should be highest in the morning and taper off throughout the day. Unfortunately, this gentleman has cortisol levels that are off the charts high which is why he has hypertension as well as insomnia. Now let me present my natural approach for reversing hypertension. My protocol involves changes in your diet, lifestyle, as well as taking some key supplements. The diet that's best for treating and preventing hypertension is known as the DASH diet. It stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. The key principles of this diet is that it's low in sodium, it's rich in vegetables and fruit, which provide a lot of potassium, magnesium, and fiber. Lean proteins are preferred, like wild fish and organic chicken. The diet also includes nuts, legumes, as well as whole grains. The diet can be personalized according to your preferences, but it needs to be rich in fiber, antioxidants, potassium, and magnesium. These are all things that you get from eating a lot of colorful vegetables and fruit. The diet should also include good fats, like olive oil and avocados to get monounsaturated fats, as well as walnuts and wild salmon to get essential omega-3 fatty acids. Now when it comes to salt, which one is the best for your blood pressure? Nowadays, a lot of people prefer sea salt and Himalayan salt, which are less refined compared to traditional iodized salt. But the truth is, when it comes to sodium content, they're all quite similar. Iodized salt has 590 milligrams of sodium in a quarter teaspoon. Sea salt has 550 milligrams in a quarter teaspoon. And Himalayan salt has 540 milligrams in a quarter teaspoon. In other words, you could be getting too much sodium regardless of the type of salt that you're using. So why is salt a problem? That's because water follows sodium by osmosis and it causes your kidneys to reabsorb more water which can raise your blood pressure. In the DASH diet, it's recommended that you limit your sodium to 2300 milligrams which is about one teaspoon per day. This is quite a bit lower than what the average American is eating 
which is over 3400 milligrams of sodium per day. The DASH diet also has a stricter version where you reduce your sodium down to 1500 milligrams per day and some people may need to follow this to really control their blood pressure. Large amounts of salt could be hidden away in certain foods so you want to watch out for these. It includes restaurant foods, processed foods, canned soups, deli meats and even ketchup. Now let's talk about the power of potassium. Potassium is a mineral that can help to balance sodium in your body. It works directly to relax blood vessels and it also helps to counteract sodium retention through your kidneys. Foods rich in potassium include berries, bananas, dark leafy greens like spinach, garlic and onions, mushrooms, sweet potato, as well as celery. The only exception is if you have moderate to severe chronic kidney disease, then your doctor may advise you to limit your potassium intake. Because celery is rich in potassium, celery juice works as a natural diuretic, helping to counteract the kidney's reabsorption of sodium. Celery also has a compound known as 3-N-butylthalide that has also been shown in clinical trials to help lower blood pressure. Did you know that beetroot juice can also help lower blood pressure? Beets are a rich source of nitrates, which helps boost your body's production of nitric oxide, which helps relax your blood vessels and lower your blood pressure. Next, you want to eat foods rich in magnesium. Because magnesium is a calming mineral, it helps to relax your blood vessels and lower your blood pressure. Foods rich in magnesium include nuts and seeds, dark leafy greens, and dark chocolate. Now just because you're cutting back on salt doesn't mean your food has to be bland. In fact, you can actually enhance the flavors of your foods by using more herbs and spices. A lot of these herbs and spices have additional antioxidants and anti-inflammatory benefits. Next, it's important to limit your alcohol intake because excess alcohol can also contribute to hypertension. Men should have no more than two drinks per day, and women should have no more than one drink per day. Of course, the less alcohol you drink, the better. You also want to limit your intake of caffeine, because caffeine constricts your blood vessels and can raise your blood pressure. So this includes coffee, energy drinks, as well as soda. This poor gentleman was really stressed at work and drank a whole pot of coffee. No wonder his blood pressure is sky high. Next, it's really important to get to a healthy weight, because if you're overweight, this could be contributing to hypertension. If you have insulin resistance, this could be causing inflammation that could be worsening your blood pressure, so you want to work to reverse this through diet and lifestyle. A paleo diet can be really effective at reversing insulin resistance because it eliminates grains like bread, rice, pasta, and cereal, which normally raise insulin and blood sugar levels. Taking a natural supplement called Berberine Pro can also help activate your insulin receptors and improve blood sugar control. To learn more about insulin resistance, please check out my video, which I'll link in the description below. When it comes to your lifestyle, getting regular exercise can make a big difference in your blood pressure. Cardiovascular exercise raises your heart rate. So you want to do 30 to 45 minutes of cardiovascular exercise per day and strength training with weights at least three times per week. Quality sleep and having a healthy circadian rhythm is also really important for your blood pressure. Taking magnesium at bedtime can really help enhance your sleep quality and help with muscle recovery. If you snore heavily at night and wake up tired and feel drowsy throughout the day, then you want to get tested for sleep apnea, which can be a root cause of hypertension. Next, it's really important that you prioritize relaxation. This is vital to your sense of well-being and has a positive impact on the cardiovascular system. When you relax, you're activating your parasympathetic nervous system, which helps lower your blood pressure. Find an activity that you enjoy, whether it's taking a hot bath, relaxing in nature, reading a good book, or spending time with a loved one. Did you know that there are non-pharmacologic therapies that have been research proven to lower blood pressure? This includes yoga, acupuncture, 
Tai Chi as well as meditation. Diaphragmatic breathing is a form of slow, deep breathing where you should see your abdomen rise and fall with each breath. It's also referred to as belly breathing, and it's a great way to stimulate your vagus nerve, which activates your parasympathetic nervous system, which helps you relax and lower your blood pressure. Now you might be wondering, what supplements can help my blood pressure? Great question, let's go over it. The number one supplement for blood pressure is magnesium. Magnesium is like a miracle mineral. It helps to relax your blood vessels as well as your muscles, improves the quality of your sleep, and helps to alleviate anxiety. It also helps to keep your bowels regular. Our essential magnesium is a chelated magnesium, which contains magnesium glycinate, citrate, and malate. It's best taken at bedtime to improve the quality of your sleep. Have you heard of a condition called preeclampsia? This is actually hypertension during pregnancy. What's fascinating is the treatment is actually magnesium through an IV. Next, we have a supplement called nitric oxide support. This contains the amino acid citrulline, which helps your body produce more nitric oxide, which helps relax your blood vessels and can help reduce your blood pressure. Next, we have the super antioxidant known as CoQ10. CoQ10 works in the mitochondria of the cells, which are the energy powerhouses of the cell. Research shows that CoQ10 supplementation can be helpful in lowering blood pressure, and it's also an important nutrient for your heart, blood vessels, brain, as well as your liver. Omega-3 fish oil has essential fatty acids that's good for your heart, and it can also help lower inflammation in the body. Methyl B complex is the stress and energy vitamin, and it helps promote a detox pathway called methylation in your cells. It helps to lower the level of an inflammatory amino acid called homocysteine, which we can measure on your blood work. This is important because high homocysteine is associated with hypertension as well as increased cardiovascular risk. Finally, we have to take care of your gut microbiome. Because remember, people with hypertension often have a less diverse gut microbiome. By supplementing with a high quality probiotic, like our Probiotic 100 billion or our Probiotic 225 billion, you can help replenish the good bacteria in your microbiome, which are lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. Having an abundance of these bacteria correlates with better blood pressure. These bacteria produce short-chain fatty acids, which are postbiotics, that also play an important role in regulating blood pressure. Now what about blood pressure medications? Sometimes we do need to use blood pressure medications, at least temporarily, while we're working on your diet and lifestyle to reverse the underlying root causes of your hypertension. Here are the main categories of blood pressure medications. They include diuretics, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, calcium channel blockers, and beta blockers. As you might recall, ACE inhibitors and ARBs block steps in the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone pathway that we reviewed earlier. If your blood pressure has been elevated for a while, it's a good idea to do some additional tests to make sure it has not affected your heart. This is when I refer patients to see a cardiologist to get an EKG, echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart, as well as a stress test. Now I want to introduce you to one of my patients named Linda. She's a 47-year-old attorney with a very stressful job. And when I first met Linda, her blood pressure was quite elevated at 160 over 94. At the time, her diet was high in fast foods, processed foods, as well as sugary treats. Linda wanted to avoid blood pressure medications and was very motivated to change her lifestyle. So I helped her to change her diet. She really cut back on the sodium and she focused on getting more potassium and magnesium which meant eating more salads, fruit, and drinking celery juice every day. She also started walking every day and doing some yoga to help lower her stress levels. I also had Linda start all the essential supplements, including magnesium. After just one month, her blood pressure improved to 142 over 86. Linda continued to work on her health and spent more of her free time relaxing whenever possible. 
When I saw her three months later, she had actually lost 10 pounds, and her blood pressure was now significantly improved at 126 over 74. She also felt so much healthier with better energy throughout the day. Let's review the key points from today's video. Hypertension is now defined as blood pressure over 130 over 80. Your diet and lifestyle play a big role in your blood pressure. Your gut microbiome can also affect your blood pressure. We can improve your blood pressure by reducing your sodium intake in your diet and increasing your intake of potassium and magnesium, which are found in vegetables and fruit. Quality sleep and regular exercise can make a big difference in your blood pressure. It's important to prioritize relaxation. Finally, taking some key supplements like magnesium, nitric oxide support, CoQ10, and probiotics can also help your blood pressure. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to post all your questions and comments below. I really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again and have a wonderful day!